These days, there's a ton of different ways to build serverless applications. You can pick from the large cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and many others. However, there are some small cloud providers that make it easier to learn, build, deploy, and manage serverless applications. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Lolo. Lolo is an integration function as a service provider that helps you build serverless applications and deploy them to the cloud using a visual style editor. When using Lolo, you write your own snippets of code called functions. You can link functions together by dragging and dropping the input to the output from one function to another in order to create connections. If you're writing particularly large functions with many different components, you can create a composite function to encapsulate all that behavior into just a single one. To help you develop faster, you can select from many of the pre-built event integrations that Lolo offers. There's many popular ones such as WebSockets, REST APIs, and timer-based events that you can hook into. Lolo is also a scalable and cost-effective solution. You can deploy your application with just a single replica, but if your workload grows beyond your expectations, you can easily add more replicas to help out with scalability. As of June 10th, Lolo is absolutely free to try out. They just launched their open beta, so you can head over to their website, lolo.co, or visit the URL in the link below to try it out for free. To show you how Lolo works, I'm now going to demonstrate how to build a simple REST API using AWS DynamoDB as the backend. So let's jump into the Lolo console and see this thing in action. All right, everyone, so here we are in the Lolo console. So in order for you to get started building your application, the first thing to do is we're obviously gonna go and click on create app over here. You need to give this thing a name here. We'll just call this one a REST API in my case, but you can name this whatever you wish. So if you click on next, uh, by default, it's gonna bring us to this studio style editor. And this is where we're going to be kind of building the workflow for our application. So you can create a new function just by clicking on this bottom button over here. That's going to add a new function. You can add many multiples of them if you want. And then later you can kind of connect these functions together. So say the output of this function wants to go to the input of this function. You just use the drag and drop editor to connect these two things together. If you're not happy with that, you can always delete it. And then of course you can uh, select both of them here and just delete these to get rid of it. Now also there are some pre-built event triggers that you're gonna be using quite a bit. Uh, in my case, we are gonna be using the one for the HTTP trigger, but there are quite a few other ones such as Lolo events, timers, web sockets, and you can take a look at some of them. Uh, you can also define your own library functions. If you have some common functions that you're gonna be using in multiple different projects, you can set those up here. So you can just click on this guy and this thing has a whole bunch of functionality built in. Uh, so let's just get rid of that and give you the rest of the tour here. Uh, so there's also a settings page where you define kind of how the application is going to be set up. Uh, if you want to add some external dependencies, you do that through the module section. Uh, so you can add any external dependencies that you wish. There are some common ones that Lolo comes with. So for example, uh, the AWS SDK is already included in the Lolo runtime, so we don't need to add that. And then there's also this variable section here where you can define some environment variables for your application. We're actually going to come back to this section a little bit later because I need to add my AWS AWS credentials here. Uh, and then there's the log section that you can use to take a look at how your application is performing. Uh, when you like invoke your API or do anything there, you'll see a stream of log lines, also some docs, uh, references, and then of course, history of each of your deployments. And when you want to save your application, you just click on the save button here. You can add some custom comments if you wish. And if you want to deploy your application, you simply click on the run button. And you can see here, there's some configuration that you can do. If we click on that, we can add more shards by clicking here and saying there's more replicas. You can add up to 10 at this point. Keep in mind, there are extra costs for adding additional replicas. Uh, so yeah, only Node.js 12.x is currently supported. However, that may change in the future. All right, so that's a little bit of a kind of quick little tour of the Lolo console section area. So let's get started actually building this thing. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to define those environment variables for my AWS uh, user that I created in the AWS console. So in order to do that, we're just going to go back to the settings section here, and I'm going to go to variables. And this is where we need to create two different app variables. We need to create one for the AWS access key and then our AWS secret access key. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create app variable here. Now we just need to give this a name. I have this stuff off screen, which I'm going to copy and paste into the console here. And of course, here is the value. And then we're going to create a second one for the secret key. Um, by the way, these keys are going to be deleted immediately after this 
project, so no point in trying to write any of this stuff down. Um, and then we click on create there. Okay, we're pretty much ready to go um, in terms of building our application. So let's head back to the canvas section and see what's going on. So we're gonna go to build first. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to create, let's say our get API, since that's the most um, easy one to understand. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click on the plus button here and we're gonna to go to HTTP trigger. We can just minimize that because we don't need it anymore. And what we need to do here is define like some properties of our endpoint. So if we double click on this element here, uh, you can see it's asking for what method do you want to use? Is it a get, post, put, patch, delete, whatever it is? And then what's the path that you want to use? So for, in my case, this is going to be like a customer's example where we're creating, reading, updating, and deleting customers. So I'm just going to call this slash customers. Now, another thing that I wanted to briefly talk about was this concept of ports. And you quickly saw them at the beginning of the video without really realizing it. And ports are these kind of elements here, the out, and usually there's an in as a default port. Now, what ports allow you to do is to define the flow of data from function to function. So typically in Lolo, you have like a function that's connected to another function. You drag the output of one to the input of another. So what you can do with ports is you can have multiple different ones on both the inbound and the outbound side. So I can add a port here. Uh, I can add another one if I like. And then you can implement kind of switch logic inside of your function to say, if the input source is for ASTF, then do something. If it's for something else, then do something else and the same thing for outbounds. So we're not really going to be using ports too much in this video, but just to be aware that this is how they work and um, you know, be aware that you can add some additional functionality by leveraging them. Now, another thing to notice is that we do have an external URL here. So this external URL already got generated for us. So I'm just going to kind of copy this and put this on my notepad to the side because when we test out our function, we do need to know what our external endpoint is going to be in order to invoke it. All right, so that's a little bit about the setup. Let's get to the actual interesting stuff here and start finally implementing the code that we need to build out this API. All right, so in order to create the DynamoDB get portion, we're gonna go ahead and click on new function down here. And so we are just going to, actually, we're gonna place this in the right spot. Let's just rename this really quick. Uh, this is the default stuff here. We'll come back to this in a second, but we're gonna go to settings and let's just call this DynamoDB get, DynamoDB get. Uh, and one other thing I forgot to mention, there is logging as well. You can configure different uh, log levels here if you're interested in one particular log level. But by default, it's just in info. And of course, you have access to metrics as well if you want to enable that too. Okay, so going back to the handler code now, and I think actually I didn't save this. Uh, no, that's fine. Okay, when we go back, it'll save. Um, so we are going to get rid of all of this stuff and I'm just going to drop in some code here and explain to you, actually paste that a little bit better. I'll explain to you what is going on here. Um, so this is our main entry point to our function here. It's the handler and we're being provided two inputs, an event input and a context input. Now within the context object, we can extract a bunch of different elements here. And these different elements, they can be either uh, functions or they can just be attributes of the context object. So for example, if you want to route data that gets retrieved within the body of this function to the next node that's connected to it, you would use the route uh, element here, or the route function from the context. If you want to do any logging, then you would extract out the log function here, which you can use to add additional data about what your function execution is doing. All right, so now we can start taking a look at some of the more interesting bits of the code here. So on line six, we're just doing some configuration for the region. On line seven, we're just setting up our DynamoDB client. And here on line eight, we're extracting out customer ID from that event object. And when you're using events or you're passing in data rather, using query parameters in the URL string, all of your data is gonna come in the query object um, of the event object here. So you're gonna do ev.query, and then you're gonna use the uh, key of whatever you're providing, and that's gonna give you the corresponding value. So now our passed in customer ID is gonna be stored in this customer ID variable here. And what we're doing down here is we're just preparing our DynamoDB input object. So we're saying uh, we want to retrieve the customer ID that we're passing in. And we're just saying here we want the key to be customer ID, which is what we just extracted over here. And our table name is customers. 
Then we're just very simply calling the DynamoDB get item function. We're extracting the data out from the response. So the data is in the response field in the item key, storing that in data. We're setting some properties on our event object. We're saying the ev.result is equal to the data that we just retrieved. And then we're routing this event to the next node. Uh, so this data that we just retrieved using this DynamoDB get item process, that's going to be available in the connection when we kind of drag and drop another function that attaches to this one. So that's how this works. Uh, all you have to do to save this, actually it auto saves, so you don't really need to do much here. Uh, so you can see now we have DynamoDB get. So now what we need to do is I need to just link these two things together because without doing that, these things are completely disassociated from one another. So we're going to go out to in. And now what we need to do is prepare our response for this HTTP event. So we're, we're getting the event here. We're passing that to the Dynamo get. The, this function is extracting this data from DynamoDB by querying it. Now we need to return a response code back to our caller. So we're going to use another function to do that. So I'm going to click on new function here. And this is just going to be for 200 OKs. That's the, well, in a production application, you would handle all sorts of different error codes. But this one is just going to be to return the provided data from this node. So we can actually connect it right now if we want. And it's also going to return that 200 OK. So let's implement that really quick now. So let's double click on this. And similarly, I have some code over here off screen. So let's just paste this in really quick and take a look. All right, so what's happening here? So we just have a three line function here, very, very simple. So for this one, we're extracting the, uh, excuse me, the emit function from context. We're using emit over here. And we are creating a body object here where we're bolting in the response. And the response is going to be what was passed in previously, so ev.result. Remember in the previous function, we set ev.result to be our data, so the data that we retrieve from Dynamo. And then from there, we're using the emit function, which effectively allows us to respond to that HTTP event. We're setting the response key, and then we're just passing in a status code of 200, and the body is going to contain our data. So that's pretty much it for how this works for a very, very simple um, get API here. So let's change the name of this thing too. So we'll just call this 200 OK. And then we're gonna go back. And let's save this function now. And let's give this thing a run really quick to make sure that it's working. So if you go into your logs now, once this whole thing starts to boot up, some logs about the startup of your containers here. Uh, so it's not coming up immediately. We'll try to go back. There we go. So we're ready and we're listening on port 4000. So let's uh, go and get the URL for our HTTP trigger here and put that in Postman and actually try this out. So I already have some data that's in my uh, DynamoDB table here. And so we're going to be able to run this right away without having to do too much. So I got the URL here. Let's go to Postman here, which I've already kind of set up with four different operations. We have our get, our post, our put, and our delete. So all I'm going to do here, maybe I just can expand this to show you. Um, we are going to be passing in our customer ID into the query string parameters. So I just pasted in our URL endpoint. That was this section here. And then I'm passing in our customer ID. Over in my DynamoDB table, I have a record with the key customer ID equals one. So if I click on send now, this should all work right out of the bat. And you can see the response is directly from my database. So customer ID is one. And then here's the address, 345 Bourne Avenue North. If we head over really quick into my DynamoDB table, you can see here in my customers table, this is the data that was there. So everything seems to be working correctly. So that's the basic kind of starting point for using Lolo. So now let's define those other endpoints, the uh, put, the post, the delete ones as well. And then I'll show you how you can kind of link these different components together and create some reusable elements. All right, so let's move on now and create our put API, which is going to allow us to insert data into our table here. And you're going to see how quick and easy this is to do using Lolo. So I'm going to click on our HTTP trigger here. Remember, this one was for get. Um, and then we are going to shift click on this guy. We're going to go to copy and then click on paste. And then we can just drag these two things down together. We can connect everything here. Okay, that's looking good. We're going to be using the same 200 OK response handler because we're going to be piping the data for put uh, into the same function over here. And this is where the reusability stuff starts coming into play. And before I do that, let's just clean this up. I want to rename this um, to get. Uh, put that back. I want to rename this one. Uh, for this one, we are going to be doing post. 
to create. And in, in addition to that, we need to just specify the type. Uh, where is that? Uh, yeah, parameters. So instead of get, it is post now. And we can just simply go back. And these two things are connected now. So while well, these three things are connected, now let's just modify our DynamoDB code here. So I'm just going to double click on this. Uh, first of all, let's rename this. So this is going to be uh, put item, I believe, is the API that we need to use here. And again, I'm just going to swap this code out with what I have here for put item. It's basically using the exact same uh, syntax here and almost exactly the same code. The only difference is what we're passing in in the input object. And we are using the put item object here. So one quick thing I really wanted to show you is that before when we were using our get API, we were extracting the input uh, events or the input keys and values using the ev.query. Now, since we're using a post event, we're going to be providing our payload in the body of the request. So now we need to extract that information out of the body. So we're getting our customer ID and our address. We're storing that in two variables. We're providing that as an item for our DynamoDB call, specifying the table, and then calling put item. Now, you don't necessarily have to return anything uh, back to the caller besides a 200 OK. So, you know, maybe you want to return a J empty JSON object or something like that. I'm just putting some dummy data in here. So just a success uh, identifier just to indicate to us when we look at this through Postman, we indeed know that this is correctly working. Uh, so now we got that set up. Let's click on back now and let's try this as well. So let's give this a save and we're going to go ahead and click on run now. And again, you could head back into your logs to keep an eye out on this thing um, to see how it's going. But I'm just going to give that a moment or so. And let's just head over to Postman now and modify some of the parameters here. Um, so I'm just going to grab this same URL and we are going to go to the post section. I'm going to swap out that URL. We don't need the query string parameters anymore because we are using a JSON application input or JSON uh, object as input. So we're providing a customer ID as two and the address being 123 fake street. Nothing else is going on here. We're just using a post event. So assuming I set this all up correctly, let's give this a whirl. So send and you can see response success. And if we check our DynamoDB table as well by clicking over here and click on run, you can see we have another object here as well. Uh, so this is indeed working correctly. So cool, everything is working as it should for the get and the post API. Let's move on to the update or the put API and the delete API. And then we'll, we'll test all of this to make sure it's working. So going back to Lolo now, we're going to basically repeat these same operations two more times. It's very, very simple to use. Click paste here. Uh, let's just move these down for a second. And then we need to link up the output here. And so this one is going to be our uh, put. So our update. And we need to change the parameters to put. You can see like how quick and easy this stuff is. Like if you're, you were doing this through a Lambda function and all that, you may be writing infrastructure as code, but this is like super dead simple to configure and use. Uh, so that's it for that one. And for this, actually I'm going to create two sets of this, um, but let's just get the naming down right first. So put item, this one is going to be update item and nothing else there. Let's copy this again. So copy and paste. And these last two are going to be for delete. So we're going to say this one is delete. And this one, let's just change the name again. So DynamoDB deletes item. All right, perfect. This is looking pretty good. All right, so, and then we need to connect that, of course. So let's go ahead and just implement the update item section here. So again, I'm just going to drop in some code. And there's really not that much different going on, but you can take a look at it for yourself. Um, so we're using some logging in here this time. It's a little bit different. So we're getting that customer ID and the address from the body, similar to what we did before. We're logging that information out. Uh, we're just providing the customer ID as the key because that's the one that we want to update. And this API is just going to allow us to set the address to something different. Um, so we extracted the address right here in this variable. And then in the expression attribute values, we're saying the address is equal to whatever is in that variable. Uh, so that's how that works. We're just kind of doing the same thing for the response and then returning that response code. I'm going to click on back now. Uh, and let's do the same thing for delete item. So again, just moving over here really quick and grabbing the code for that. So let's paste it in and you'll see it's again, very, very similar code. Uh, so we're just setting this params object. We're providing the key that we want to delete. That's going to be what is passed into the API. 
like we can see right here. So we got customer ID from the body and then we are calling the delete item API. All right, so this is all set up correctly now. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on save really quick and then click on run and we'll test this stuff out. So give this a moment to boot up. If you want, you can go to the log section, keep an eye on it. You can see it's draining the container here and in a moment or so we should see like the listen on port 4000. Uh, but perhaps in the meantime, I can just head over into Postman and get this started. Uh, so again, just need to copy this URL for the put and the delete. Uh, so let's try out the put one first. So let's change that URL to the correct one. That's good. All right, so we are going to change customer ID 2's address from 123 Fake Street to 123 Cool Street. Uh, so just click on send now and we should see response success. Perfect. Let's look in DynamoDB. Click on run. There we go, 123 Cool Street. Everything's working great. Let's try the same thing for the delete operation. Uh, actually in Lolo here, uh, if we go back, we should be able to see, yeah, there's the um, the log lines and this is the function. So it also tells you the function that is emitting those log lines as well. So this is the data that the Lolo function received uh, from that ev.body call. Uh, but yeah, let's go back to Postman and test out the delete event here. And so going to delete, dropping in the correct API URL again. Uh, and inside the body, we're just going to delete customer ID 2 here. Going to go ahead and click on send. And all right. Oh, I did, did get an error here. So I think I know what I did. I think I forgot to change the um, parameters for this one. Yeah, so it's still on uh, put. So we need to set that to delete instead. So let's just resave this and rerun this. And this should all work correctly after that small modification here. Uh, so let's go back to Postman while that container is starting up again and just go ahead and yeah, same same uh, input here. Go ahead and click on send now. Uh, since the container is still starting up the first time, it may take a little bit of extra time here. But if we see now we have a response of success, we go back into my DynamoDB table. Um, we click on run again. You can see that the record with customer ID 2 has now disappeared. So that is what Lolo looks like to build a very simple REST API. You can really see how quick this was to set this up. Of course, this was a very kind of simple and trivial implementation, but uh, to get this working with such few clicks and such little effort really makes Lolo an attractive option for those of you that are looking for something different uh, to build and deploy your applications in the serverless ecosystem. So if you want to check out Lolo, I'll put a link to their URL in the description section below. It is absolutely free to try out right now as of the open beta on June 10th. So take advantage of that if you wish. And if you have any questions on Lolo, feel free to put them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.